Hey everyone, so today we'll talk about something that is very often omitted or kind of brushed off, especially when talking about OpenVPN. It's not really a secret knowledge, but it's most often very crucial, especially if you are setting the OpenVPN not only for your home lab, but for your institutional small business where you employ workers and want to give them a VPN access. Or in general, if you just want to have a tighter grip on what's actually going on when you are actually giving people access to your VPN. So typically when you see an OpenVPN tutorial, it's made as easy as possible to get you started. And by that I mean it's either provided by PFSense or somebody uses some ready script to provision everything for them and they actually omit a very serious thing. I would say that especially when designing a VPN, it's more important to spend your time on this part rather than considering the VPN ciphers, etc. And by that I mean the SSL TLS certificate chain and design. You might be scratching your head thinking, just the certificates, just the SSL? And I would say yes. So very often when you deploy an open VPN, you need to deploy your own CA uh, infrastructure, the certificate authority from scratch. And you know, you have occasion to do many, many things here. It's not often that you will deploy a VPN, a small to medium sized business where they already have a working certificate uh, infrastructure that you can just, you know, latch onto. Very often you have to do this yourself by hand. And this is a very big design thing because you can deploy certificate authority or your certificate infrastructure in pretty much any way you would want to. There are many things to consider, like do you want to split your certificate authority into sub-certificate authorities that will deploy the certificates separately for users that are actual people and let's say servers if you have those. What about the cases when somebody leaves the company and they have like three years certificate issued. How do you deal with that? Well, obviously with certificate revocation lists. This is like very rarely mentioned and very rarely emphasized about how important this is. The SSL TLS certificates are basically kind of their own thing, like their own entity entirely. But you know, when talking about OpenVPN, I feel like you just cannot have a conversation without having a deep grasp and understanding uh, about what certificates are. I can guarantee you that there is this one specific case that probably most of the system administrators have been to. What happens when your certificate authority is expiring? Or what happens when your user certificates are expiring? And this is a very big thing because imagine coming to work, like let's say on a Monday, uh, Monday morning and none of your VPN is working, like none of the clients can connect, you cannot connect to anything like via the VPN, you can see that the connections are not being established. Most often the certificate authorities are being signed with a 10 year expiry date. So what happens after the expiry date comes? Well, it expires, so the certificate chain cannot be validated anymore. And this is a very bad day to have because every single client has the certificate authority file uh, on, their, on their own certificate store. So if you haven't had a plan in place to fix that, to change your CA, to resign it or whatever, and then deploy it to clients, oh boy, you're gonna have a bad day. People look at this and say, oh, it's 10 years. I mean, we'll have this figured out by then. And you know what? I've been already at two workplaces. I've worked in two companies where I basically came and that 10 year period was coming to an end. And I've basically had to design and oversee and do the uh, certificate authority replacement and uh, resigning the whole process, right? Uh, which is funny, but like I said, sometimes you need to be also aware that, you know, it's not that this 10 year value is a default. Sometimes I've seen CAs being de deployed and signed with five year uh, date. 
which is, like I said, for home lab, for your personal use, quite okay. I mean, you can probably handle such event if it came to be. But in business, when basically every working day, every working eight hours is valuable, not only to you, but to the people actually performing some sort of work uh, that depends on this thing, uh, is pretty crucial. Let me just maybe move for some more interesting camera angle. So another thing that's very like often not discussed is how to monitor the certificates. Because yeah, you have the OpenVPN deployed, you have the certificates issues. Let's say you have the, mm, you have the tool set necessary to design, deploy certificate authority. You have it like thought out, right? It's ready. How about monitoring the certificates issued? And by that, I mean, even if it's just like simply checking when they will expire, even if it's only to notify the users, because, you know, imagine that, let's say you have the certificate authority valid for 10 years, and in practice, you shouldn't issue client certificates for a period longer than CA itself. So typically you issue those for a year or two, three years, depends on your policies. So how do you monitor this? And let's say notify the user that their certificate is expiring and they, then they will lose access to their VPN, right? So do you have some system in place to monitor? Do you have a portal ready to allow the client to reissue the new certificate for, the, for themselves? Uh, are you aware that some people might be, you know, just like losing their VPN access on a single certain day and it will be like 50 people because you've issued like 50 client certificates one after, one after the other on the same day. And we are not even like talking about the open VPN ciphers, etc. We are still in the SSL certificates TLS area. Issuing and monitoring those certificates is, I would say, almost as important as running the open VPN server itself. And you know, most of the time, you would be dealing with the certificate issues and not the VPN issues. Because, you know, OpenVPN, you basically install it, configure it, fire and forget. It's the certificates you are constantly issuing and revoking. OpenVPN has this cool thing called Easy RSA. And it's actually a very cool project they basically started because they looked at everything I've just said. Uh, at the examples similar to what I've talked about and said that, you know, doing all of that stuff by hand, you know, issuing CA, CRLs, uh, issuing new certificates is a pain in the ass. So let's make this more user friendly, especially when you are issuing and deploying a whole new architecture from scratch. With easy RSA, at least the deployment of the certificate authority is much, much easier. But you also need to be aware how easy RSA does things because it's basically nothing else than just a wrapper for open SSL command, like just simplifying things. You also need to be aware how it's storing your private keys, how it's storing your private CA key. You should be aware that this should be like a protected file. So typically what I've seen that is being done is that the private key for the CA is being uh, printed, saved to an external USB or whatever hard drive storage and placed in the fireproof or let's say some safe locker. And it's not being touched if, if possible, unless you want to or need to issue certificates directly from that certificate authority or some sub-certificates from that certificate, some sub-CAs some sub-certificate authorities from that certificate authority. And, you know, it also needs to be said that if you are just doing a very flat structure of just having a CA and that CA is issuing certificates, um, then you probably also need to make sure that your CA is well guarded. This is something that it's mostly for the administrator to be responsible and aware of how this works and why it should be done in such a way, not in other. But like I said, I've noticed that this is very like omitted, like brushed off thing that's just not very often discussed or emphasized enough for people to even just have uh, an initial guess that they should dig on this further.
If you actually want to deploy OpenVPN and do it for business, for production, for bigger like number of people, then I would say focus your learning on certificates, on easy RSA, on stuff like that, because most of your day-to-day -day tasks will probably be uh, revolving around issuing certificates, revoking certificates, stuff like that, and not about, you know, planning the next cipher setting. Uh, because, you know, if Cypher gets broken, it will definitely make the news and you'll definitely be informed. So yeah, thank you for listening to my rambling today. Uh, if you like uh, what I do, then please like, subscribe, share the video. Uh, and I hope I'll see you next time. Bye.